All right, back again. Gonna do another Falcon video. Um, I thought today we'd do some granular synthesis. Um, one of my favorite kinds of synthesis. And I thought I would use the multi-granular engine that's up here. We've got various kinds. Um, granular, multi-granular, scrub, stretch, sample. Slice, stretch, um, maybe another time I'll sort of go into what they're all about, but today let's just bring this down here. Um, <clears throat> oh, by the way, when I drag stuff down to the key group, you can, depending on where you put your mouse cursor, you can do, uh, like I could make it so this key group is just on that one key or that one key, which means you can um, make drum kits and splits and all that kind of stuff, um, which is pretty neat. Uh, I guess I haven't really talked about that, but it's a feature. Um, so what we're gonna do is just over here, I've got a flute sound, which sounds like this. <laughs> Just gonna drag that across into here. Move this back. Um, and now we've just got it's sort of very uninteresting. And it stops. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to loop mode and do forwards and backwards, which means that the grain or the slice or whatever will go back and forth uh in its loop. Um I'm also gonna bring the voices up to eight. Which, you know, already more interesting, but still pretty boring. Um, if I do the spread and you notice going across here, we have these uh, grains and depending on how spread they are, uh, well, they're spread out or they're not. Um, I can always automate this, which is, you know, again, what's such a great thing about Falcon. Everything just about can be automated or modulated, I guess I should say. Get some sort of interesting comb filtering, like flanger effects when the positions are really close. Let's, let's uh, widen them out. And one thing I would like to do is change the speed so that it's really low. And I might bring this spread back a little bit. And bring the position maybe around here. You can actually make the position more random. And you can make it so it doesn't move at all by changing the direction. Which is pretty cool. <clears throat> um, so what I would like to do though is automate the position uh, or modulate it. I don't know why I keep mixing those two words up. I mean, they're essentially the same sort of thing. Um, with a modulator of some kind, um, I haven't decided that yet and maybe we'll get to that in a little bit. But let's look at some of these other controls. So we've got jitter. And size uh, is the size of each grain. So you get a much smoother sound at a bigger size. Just 
pretty lush, really. Um, but if you bring it right down, it gets really gnarly. Not sure why this jitter doesn't seem to be doing anything. I'm sure there's a reason. Maybe we'll find out later. Density, um, similar to size. Produces a cool effect uh, on the low end, but it's pretty gritty. Um, and we've got this duration variation. That's pretty nice. Um, um, with a sound like this, I think you, you really always want it to be a slow attack. At least I do. And ideally a slow release. So I'm just... I'm just a sucker for pads. I might change the curve of the release just a bit. So that's pretty great. Um, like I said, I would like to modulate the position. So let me go down here to key group. Um, it's, it's just quite a lot of options as usual. I think for something like this, it would be cool to do like a bit of a smooth random situation, um, which just it sort of randomizes the signal to varying degrees depending on the settings as I've discussed in previous videos. Um, I'm gonna make it so it doesn't re-trigger so it's always in a random place and a random start. And I'm gonna change the depth pretty low because I don't want it to... I don't want it to move outside of the, the sort of um, sustain of the sound, of the flute sound. I'm going to change the rate. Anyway, so you get the idea. Um, I'm going to modulate some of these other controls as well. Um, like... It'd be cool maybe to modulate the size to an envelope, perhaps. We can try that right away by... We go to a, another one of these envelopes. And if we bring the size down, so we sort of start low and bring this down a bit. Way you get kind of like a slow resolve as it kind of smooths out at the peak, at the sustain level.
I think that adds a nice variation to the sound. Um, I think also there's other things, of course, as always, that we can play with. Um, can't quite remember what this time spread does, but I'm assuming... I'm assuming it sort of changes um, each of the grains relative speed from one another, uh, spreads the speed out a bit. Um, I can't say for sure. I can, I, I'm sure I've looked into this in the manual in the past. I mean, I do use this um, granular system quite a bit, but I can't quite remember. It sounds fine where it is. Um, what else have we got here? Just leave that on 50. I mean, honestly, I think that's just pretty good how it is. I quite like that. So, um, one thing that I think a sound like this just inherently wants is reverb. Um, and instead of putting it on the program level up here, um, I'm going to put it in the layer level because I might, I'll probably layer this sound with something else and I might not want that to have reverb as well. So why don't we try as a change of pace, um, this I reverb, which is a convolution reverb and let's see what we got. Digital plates. Let's have a look. Smooth plate. Lovely. I love that when you just pick a preset and it just works. Um, especially for something like reverb, <laughs> which I feel like, um, you know, I do spend a bit of time tailoring my reverbs, but you have to, because you know, reverbs are just so great. You want to get the most out of them. Um, I actually recently bought, um, just as a quick aside, recently bought, uh, UVI's spark verb and relayer spark verb is I, I think i talked about on a previous video i'll just bring it up real quick it's the standalone version of the spark verb from falcon and i also bought relayer <clears throat> which is i've barely scratched the surface of this but it's a multi-tap delay it's exceptional from what i've used so far it's extremely powerful uh, mad sound design possibilities. Um, maybe I'll do a separate video on those two at some other time. Um, I just thought I'd bring them up. Um, let's bring this back over here. 
So I've got this nice granular fluty pad. Which is beautiful. Uh, we all love that. I think it'd be nice though is, or what I think would be nice is if we uh, modulate the pitch just a bit. Um, and I want to do that, I think, with an LFO. And the reason I'm sort of ho-humming and being like, oh, which one should I do? It's because I could do this drunk, uh, which adds a nice instability. Uh, maybe I'll just bring it up. It's kind of like the um, smooth random, but it's just like a sort of different variant of it. Um, and I'm going to make it no re-trigger, but extremely low bandwidth. So if I bring the bandwidth up, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's like barely perceptible. Uh, maybe I'll bring it up a bit, see where we can find the uh, a nice sweet spot. Maybe I will swap it for a smooth random. Um, let's just try that because I think smooth random is just a little bit more predictable, uh, ironically, given that it's random. Um, drunk is kind of drunk, you know, it's, it's wobbly. It's, uh, it's kind of uh, can get quite chaotic. Um, if I do this and I bring the depth quite low, let's just bring it to zero and we'll see where we go. You see, it's a bit more, you can hear it, but it doesn't sort of go too far out of range. Um, that might change though, if I do no re-trigger and random start. You see? <laughs> Let's try. So that's cool. Um, one thing that I think could be interesting is modulating, go down here, modulating the position spread just slightly and slowly. Um, maybe with an LFO this time, keep it a bit more, uh, let's, tr let's just try it, let's just try it. Gotta bring the depth right down. And you can see it doing it. It's it's pretty extreme. I don't. That's too much. So we're gonna bring this down. And it's too fast. I also wonder if. Um, should just bring in a filter <clears throat> and I think this time we'll use a digital filter which I quite like in this it's um I don't know it's just a good very clean filter and <clears throat> uh what might be interesting uh, how do I do that I can't quite remember oh there it is sorry what might be interesting is to 
adjust the key tracking on it so into the negative so that the higher up you go the softer the sound so if i just bring this all the way up bring that down so you can hear that like and i think that that works because the sound gets quite harsh the further you go up Um, another thing we can do though, we just give this a little bit of cue. Maybe we start the frequency of the filter there and we just, maybe we can add an analog ADSR. Um, bit of attack, decay, bring the sustain down just a touch. Bring that up. Oh, that's too much. Let's bring the depth of it down. Let's decay up and the attack up. Um, the fun thing with this, uh, this digital filter as well is you can change the slope pretty dramatically. Like, I'm not going to do this, but just as an example, you can turn it to 96 dB. It's just basically just like a fucking cliff. Which, by the way, again, another product, and, and I'm not at all being paid by UVI, by the way. I kind of wish I was, but I'm not. Um, but I just love uh, some of their plugins. So I bought this recently as well, Shade, which is an insane filter plugin slash EQ. Not going to get into it here. I mean, you can look it up online and find out all about it anyway. But the reason I bring it up is just because... Uh, Falcon has a lot of filters, uh, different models, and Shade sort of incorporates a lot of them um, and adds all of these modulation capabilities. So, and when I was just sweeping this filter just now, it, and with this 96 dB cutoff, it, uh, it sounded like some of the filters in Shade, because you can just like, you can just cut the signal off uh, completely, um, with massively high EQ curves, you know, I said I wasn't going to use it. It's actually pretty cool. It's a bit washy. If I go down to six, so it's like nothing. That's kind of, I think, more what I'm after for this. It's just like a gentle shaping. But rather than it being like a proper noticeable filter, I kind of just want it to be like a tone control. So let's leave it at that. Um, so I think this sound is good. Um, there are other things, of course, that we can do. Um, so one thing is when I imported this, flute sample it's a tuned flute sample um so i think it's tuned to c but i'm not sure uh so i'm just going to bring in another layer just go to my layer section and just add a layer and i'm just going to bring in an analog down here just so I can like tune it. But it's already in tune, like it, it figured it out. Um, that's, it's not always gonna figure it out <laughs> depending on the sample you load in. Like I, I loaded in a sample, uh, the flute sample, which is like pretty, I, I chose it specifically because I knew it would sound good in a granular context. Um, most things will sound interesting in a granular context, but tuned stuff, you kind of want it to be pretty tuned. Otherwise, you'll end up with kind of a messy sound. Um, obviously, there are always going to be exceptions to that, but 
That's my experience. So that's all tuned. Um, let's get rid of this analog. And instead of that, I might bring in this analog stack, which we haven't in my videos talked about this yet. It's like the analog, except for you have eight oscillators all with their own tuning controls and panning controls. Um, and you can get pretty wild, um, like huge synth sounds if you sort of start using a lot of these oscillators. Um, so I might explore this just a little bit. Um, start with the triangle. And let's change the attack. That's good. Um, I'm gonna add another one, another triangle, but this one, I'm going to modulate this control, the sense control with a slow LFO. So I turn read trigger off. So, I mean, I kind of already like where this is going. Um, if you want to get really fucking buck wild, though, you can just keep going with this. Like, maybe we should add some noise. And we can individually change the volume of this noise. I only want a tiny bit of it. So think um, maybe if we hard pan two triangle waves, which are quite just detuned from each other. Um, let's bring the volume on them down pretty significantly. Change the tuning back a little bit. Also, could change the octave. That's a bit better. Um, <clears throat> but I think... I think a bit of modulation. Maybe some... Maybe I'll do a bit of drunk modulation, bandwidth right down, and I'll do it on this one too. And I'm selecting a different drunk because I want them to move separately. I'll turn re-trigger off on both of them. Because I have a volume control for each oscillator here, um, I might 
actually turn them both down. Uh, maybe I have to turn them up actually about there and then modulate them with another envelope. Um, let's do a new analog ADSR. And let's bring the attack right up. Bring the release even further up and sustain pretty, something like this. And I will add modulation to the same analog ADSR. So, you know, you get the vibe. Um, one thing I would like to do is maybe on this key group, we can add a little bit of grit. Um, <clears throat> and we can just do that quickly with um, the Redux uh, plugin. I think if I do smooth random on this and bring down the depth considerably. Now you can hear that the, uh, <laughs> these triangle waves are going pretty far out of tune thanks to this drunk random that I've got on them. And I think that that's just too much. Um, so I'm gonna drop this master like depth on both of them because I don't want it to get that far out of hand. Make it so they do re-trigger, because um, that way they sort of start from the same spot every time. And you get a bit more of a predictable uh, vibe from them. Um, let's just bring this up a bit. Um, I'm also going to turn the volume down on them slightly and you can you can um, double click on these by the way and just enter a value which I'm going to do minus oh, no minus 10 let's try that for both of them yeah that's better so now we got this frequency doing its thing, adding a bit of niceness. Why don't we get this bitrate to sort of uh, hover ar around here in a nice random fashion also with a bit of smooth random. So that's cool. Um, <clears throat> I'm also going to modulate the tuning of the, like the master tuning of the oscillator um, with just a straight up LFO 
Pretty great. Pretty great. Um, I think that release on that is a bit, bit too intense. Um, so, you know, got some cool things shaping up. Um, I don't think I'm going to bother filtering this because I kind of like the vibe of it. Um, and, you know, triangle waves are already pretty soft, so. Um, but there are like other things that we can do. And one of them I'm just going to try because I'm curious is some chorus. I'm going to do that with Thoris here. Pretty awesome pad sound, <clears throat> if I do say so myself. Um, I feel like there is one thing that I could do that might make this, I don't know, just sort of icing on the cake, I guess. Um, I haven't really thought that hard about how to go about it just yet. <laughs> um, maybe, possibly the organ? It's just... Have a quick listen. Maybe if I get rid of that one. Um, and the reason I've chosen the organ is just because it's a pretty basic sound. And you can do a lot of really cool stuff with this organ. Um, It's, it's pretty sick. You can get some really authentic organ sounds out of it. That's not what I'm going to be doing today. Um, what I think I would like to do is to kind of do a sort of sparkly, spacey sound uh, using some sort of arpeggiated uh, situation. But I'd kind of like it if it kind of just only did it like once through. Let's just have a look. Let's just bring up the, uh, the just mute these. Um, uh, steps. Let's just bring the steps down to four. So, there you go. We bring this. That's kind of the vibe I'm after. Hmm. 
what if I did it faster? Hmm, that's kind of more what I'm after. And I can probably get away with that. Um, if I, oh, is this even gonna be possible? Cause I might be running up against one of Falcon's limitations here, which is always a bit of a pain. Um, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what we can do. Cause if I do an envelope on the key group, uh, it's gonna treat every single key hit that the arpeggiator makes as a single envelope. And what I would like it to do is to do it on this layer. If you do it on the layer, the, let's try it. But like the um, envelope doesn't trigger on the layer. So, uh, it might be working. Maybe <laughs> it's not. See, and I just find that to be, um, maybe I'm missing something. Like maybe there is some thing um, <clears throat> that needs to be done uh, here. I find it very frustrating that I can't add a envelope, like say after an arpeggiator like this. It's pretty frustrating. Um, it just doesn't trigger at all. Um, so let's not do that. Maybe if I do five steps, no, oh my God. This magic mouse will be the death of me. Yeah, a bit frustrating. Um, Cause I can't add an arpeggiator down here. It's, it's just the way Falcon works. It's one of its annoying limitations, which I do, I don't run into it that often, but occasionally just like, why the fuck can't I do that? It's so stupid. Um, maybe if somebody in the comments wants to let me know, Please do. I don't think it's possible. I've tried so many times. Anyway, the reason why I wanted to do this is because I just wanted to get like a twinkly kind of sound. And if we add, uh, is this velvet delay? I don't think I've ever used that. And maybe that's why. <laughs> um, Drop this speed down back to 16. Oh my God, I think I just figured something out. Maybe, maybe, let's try it. Um, <laughs> if in here, I just bring in a gain. And then add Oh my God, does that work? Ah. Oh. It doesn't. It doesn't work. It does the exact same fucking thing. <laughs> oh, shit. Still, that's pretty good. 
I kind of like the playing with the attack. Um, and I think I'm going to do that because it's a, it's a cool effect. So I probably don't need this gain here, but I think it's, maybe it's cool to keep it separate from this. So let's just, let's just roll with it. Um, I don't think it's, this gain knob is going to increase the CPU usage very much, but we do have this one here. I don't know. Maybe we'll keep it simple and get rid of this and get rid of this and go here and modulate this with an envelope. Um, that won't work though, because of the arpeggiator. So instead of an envelope, let's modulate it with something else. Like my old favorite, a smooth random. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna add a reverb. And this time I'm gonna use spark verb and let's go with a shimmer. Um, I don't always use presets, but sometimes it's just handy um, with hyper high. pretty good. It's a little bit sharp on the high end. I like that, but let's just bring in a digital EQ. Hang on, so let me quickly check what this does. Interesting. Um, I've got a convolver here. I can just add a sample to that. That could be very interesting. Let's just, while we're here, let's just have a quick experiment with that. Uh, maybe we could add the flute sound. Or, instead of that, let's get out of this menu. Um, let's go to these samples and to rises. Let's pick that one. pretty sick. Um, yeah, that's good. So now we've got this sort of airy, crystalline sound. I'm wondering if the arpeggiator is too fast. <clears throat> and if I, just to experiment, bring it down to this.
maybe it's a bit more manageable at that um, <clears throat> speed. Um, I think uh, I was going to EQ it, but I think one thing that should be done is compression. Feedback compressor. What does that do? Bring in this digital EQ. Cool. Let's just unmute these. <clears throat> uh, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, my only concern really is the relative volume of the layers, but we can very quickly fix that. So let's just turn down this volume. And this one. Also, just wondering if I should bring in some of these other organs. Yeah. I also think just um, a bit of gentle uh, panning. to sort of like bring it all together. Um, <clears throat> I, I often find, you know, a gentle reverb will do that nicely. If we go to plate, um, classic plate, let's try that.
I like that a lot. I like it a lot. Um, there's not much more to say about it. Maybe if I chuck on a maximizer... Pretty cool sound. That ARP, the way that rings out, is really cool. It's, it's maybe a bit much. I feel like the volume of it should probably be down a bit. I mean, I reckon I should just sort of save it there. Um, God, what to call it? Uh, sparkly Blue Pat. Highly original name. All right, I think that's gonna do it. This is this is it. I I know I've just made another pad. Um, sue me. I love fucking pads. I love them. Um, so I'm going to make more pads forever, really. Um, but I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope you enjoyed watching the way that I work through these kinds of problems with sound design. Um, I would like to make more of these. Uh, I would like to make videos about other UVI stuff, about maybe like Arturia Pigments. Definitely going to make videos of VCV Rack because I've been using that quite a lot. Um, and I would also like to make some videos just about like, you know, mixing and like uh, my production process and for like finished tracks rather than just sound design and fucking around with synths. Um, I do love fucking around with synths though. So anyway, uh, please like and subscribe my videos. Um, let me know if you have any requests about what sorts of things I should do. Um, and just, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, anyway, hope you enjoyed this and I'm gonna play out with a few lush chords. Mm -hmm.